Hi, I'm Andrew from Cytomic and I'm going to run you through some of the features of the Drop version 1. Uh, I need a break from coding so I thought I'll just put together this video and it'll help people get started with the Drop. So, um, I've got a little project set up in Ableton. It's going to be pretty basic just to walk you through everything. So I've just got one drum loop as such. basic and down tempo and then I've got um, uh, pad sound here PWM pad and a um, um, kind of a bass lead sound and that'll be it for the sounds and then um, we'll layer them up and um, show you how series and tricks and things that you can do um, to get a cool sound with the drop so I've got all of the tracks padded you can see here to negative 12 just um, to give us some headroom for when we're filtering and uh, doing other things and it's um, general good practice to I like having the meters at zero and then just and having a utility just pre everything just to get the levels trimmed right because everything comes so hot and typically out of presets and out of um loops and things so um let's get let's get down to business the drop will whack it on the uh drums to start with so um and and just map out um to make things quicker we'll configure this we'll put the power the um drive Cut off and res, and do the same. Power, drive, cut off, res, and they're all mapped. All right, so they're all down here. Great, active, active. <clears throat> um, so quick thing, on, quick rundown on the interface while we got it up here. So high pass filter goes into a low pass filter. You can um, see the cut off here. You can see the frequency response in the middle, and then adjust the resonance. Hey, and that's it. So um, you can switch the four pole here, change the filter algorithm and the circuit that's being modeled here and here. And um, and that's it for the top section. This, this one keeps you from going into self oscillation, which is handy for um, some situations, but I want to go a little bit crazy here sometimes just for the fun of it. Um, so let's just start, um, let's have a listen to it. Just filtering. So let's just switch both of those off. So you don't really hear much because the levels are, um, you've got the level meter here and it's just blinking um, into the kind of the solid blue and into some green, which means it's the right level hitting it. And then this is just blinking into some solid blue and yellow. So there's not much drive going on. So it's really a transparent sound to start with. So um, that's what you want from your filter. You, when you switch it in, you don't really hear much change, but let's bring it down. All right, and bring the high pass up. So kind of basic stuff you can do is just, if you want to isolate some sounds, you probably turn the resonance, you know, make it kind of neutral about there. And you can isolate some sounds just like that, different parts of a mix or something. Um, for that kind of an application, you can switch to these MD filters. They're a bit more efficient and you're not really doing much. It's just kind of boxing off the sound. Um, and they'll be get what you want done nice and easily but um, let's switch to the HD ones for this back there all right two poles enough so let's just add some oomph to the kick so we're down around 50 hertz that's good and let's start doing some um, basic modulation on the drum sound. So here's your um, mod section in the middle and you pick the destination that you want to change along the top. 
So you got the high pass frequency, high pass resonance shift, which moves both the high pass and low pass cutoff together to make a band pass modulation. Low pass frequency, low pass resonance. The pre gain, so it's pre coming into the filter. So you can get drive, adjust the drive with that one. And then the post, which is just a clean, these are both clean gain stages. So you can attenuate the volume after the filter. So you can do kind of um, amplitude modulation and panning effects with these two. So let's um, just modulate the, um, the cutoff. Now down here you can see um, the modulation sources. And if you want to see one of them up in here, you click on this button. So let's get uh, the envelope follower going just to add some auto wire. So we switch it on. Now the target is the low pass frequency and that's the depth knob for the envelope. So we turn that up and as soon as we press play, we're going to get some wobbles showing here. So let's do that. There you go. So that's your kind of classic auto wire. There's sensitivity here, so you can kind of make it jump higher. Let's just add a bit of motion like that. All right, so that's um, how to do an envelope follower. Uh, kind of auto wire thing. You've also got another mode down here, which is trigger. You can see this is kind of like, this is following the amplitude of the audio all the time. But if you switch to trigger mode, it switches this and now it kind of, it turns the audio into a trigger signal. So this way you can kind of get more like a regular synthesizer envelope kind of thing. So that's, I think that's working better here. So we'll leave it like that. All right, so let's have a listen to pre and post then. We'll switch it off. There's a bit of bass boost. And some envelope action. All right. <clears throat> So that, let's leave that for now and switch over to the pads. So we'll just we'll duplicate this. Um, duplicate. Uh, get rid of that and that. And uh, bring it over here. So we've got our mapping. All right. So pads, 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 pads. So let's get um, this bypass. Don't need any of that. Now you can also switch off the modulation here. There's a little on off toggle and alt click to clear so there we go we're back to kind of basic sound here so let's have a listen to the dry pad so we'll add a little bit of motion actually let's just um record in um some chords so bring the drum loop back and um, record in some chords on here and we'll try again there we go, try that again. All right. So let's start um, filtering. We get we want this to wobble a bit, give us a bit of action in here. So let's use LFO2 switcher on. All right. So um, LFO2 is a combination of um, let's bring that kind of down. 
combination of um, LFO and step sequencer. So you see you've got your steps here and your patterns here, but um, we'll just stick to using it as a basic kind of wobble. So let's bring up the depth on LFO2. So you can see here um, where the cutoff is being modulated to as it animates as a kind of a ghosted view. And even when um, this kind of shows you your minimum and maximum modulation at, in any one instant. So if you're going really fast, you'll just get this big wide blur so you can see what's going on pretty much at a glance, even with audio rate stuff. So let's, let's have a look at the parameters of this um, LFO. So let's sync it up to beat. So to do that, you just put it on beat sync. So every two beats, it'll resync automatically. Um, and two beats of the current um, rate. So let's pick two notes. So every two lots of two notes, it'll resync bang on again. And there it just did the sync. Um, so we're locked in time. So that's your rate, your multiplier makes takes this base rate and then multiplies it by um, a number so you can get just subtle changes in speed or go right up to audio rate so you can see that kind of blur of the min and max here and it shows you the blur on the trace as well we're covering the whole thing all the time so and then slow it down Alright, so um, asymmetry kind of does this and this. You can just kind of see what they all do. I'll just do them all here so you can just. So it makes it square. Swing changes the timing. Random kind of changes the endpoint so you can make them randomize them. So if I speed it up a bit, random, you can see kind of it doing its thing. Okay, phase is the start phase, and this is the one we want for this one, stereo. Let's make it a kind of a nice chasing sound, just give it a little bit of a different shape, so it's not just a straight triangle. There we go. So we've got some action going on now, on our pad, but we can do some action with the high pass filter as well, so let's put that on. And use LFO1, which is just a sine wave LFO. But that's all we really need here as well. So slow that down, spread it nice and wide in stereo, and dial in some modulation to the high pass frequency from that. Okay, so we got some kind of phasery action going on. Alright, okay, so that'll do for that. Right, so let's go to Cypher. What should we do? We'll duplicate this one again. Duplicate, duplicate. All right, up here. Okay. So let's get rid of these again. Um, right. So this time we'll... Um, instead of just kind of wobbling around on its own or following the audio of this one, we'll trigger it off MIDI. So I can show you how that works. So we need to enable MIDI down here. We will pick MIDI here and here for the envelopes and switch them on. And let's do the MIDI routing. So in live, you've got a couple of ways, but um, let's just set up a new MIDI track. The kind of easiest way is just to pick 
the MIDI from this channel, which is Cypher, we want to always monitor it and we want to send it back to Cypher, but not the track itself, the, the plugin, the drop on that track. So now whenever we pick Cypher there, we can trigger both the plugin and, um, and that way we can trigger the envelope. So you see a little MIDI light, everything's good. We're tracking, let's track the cutoff frequency so that um, when you change pitch, the cutoff tracks with it. And um, let's let's have a look. Let's use a Jupiter 8 filter, four pole low pass, and a um, uh, MS20 Mark II high pass to um, all right. So let's um, get some modulation going on to the um, low pass cutoff from envelope one. So So we're in trigger mode. If it was in gate mode, then it stays open. You can see the graphic while you've got the key down, but we want a um, bow on the sound, so we'll leave it in trigger. But the gate mode is good for um, um, a volume envelope. So let's um, view envelope two, and um, we're gonna change the post volume. So, you see in Cypher, if we bump the uh, so release up, so we just got a buzz. So, we can um, clamp down on that and use the envelope in the drop instead. So, um, all we do is map envelope 2 to post. So, we bump up the sensitivity so it... There's no volume modulation. If we were down here, we'd kind of get louder and quieter, but we'll bump it up full. And let's have a look back at envelope one. Now, yeah, that's pretty good. For the velocity feel, but you can adjust that here as well, like so you can... You have to really crack it to get it go to go, but around there feels about right. All right, so. We can get a huge range of tones here if we just adjust the cutoff and resonance. So. Which reminds me, let's run through um, the glide section as well. Now, you can, currently it's just jumping, but we can apply glide. The glide applies to um, the knob when you move it. So if I do, you can see it smooths, changing the knob. So if I um, bring the time down to be... All right, so now we can apply this glide to key track as well. So when we change notes, so we'll get rid of the envelope for a sec. So switch off the actual envelope. Just We just want to hear the, there, that's that glide. And if you um, switch that off, you just it just jumps straight away. So let's put on some track. track and we'll bring the envelope bring the envelope back right and you've also got legato mode down here and um, key track for LFO 2 so if you're doing kind of yeah let's let's do that it's um, fun you can grab the low pass frequency um, we'll switch off the envelope again just so you can hear and we're gonna dial in 
LFO2. So um, we can key track that. So when so the wobble will be so it's key tracked. And that's useful, not maybe for low frequency stuff, but when you start getting up into the audio rates. So if you get like a... Keep it in sync with you, whereas if you switch it off, it kind of just sounds like ring modulation. And it's all atonal, but um, this way you can get it to be a bit more tonal. Alright, so enough of that. Womp, gone, and um, let's get rid of that. That's what we were doing. So drive. When you got a, you know, you can um, drive any old sound with this one, but with a synth, you can kind of really punish things a bit more. And changing the um, high pass cutoff really gives you a huge range of tones as anyone that's used an ms20 knows this is where the key track comes in really handy because you get the same tone just kind of spread wherever you want, so it's really cool. Now, see here when you um, bring it to the top, because it's key tracking, it won't get it all the way up, but this is where you can make use of the shift. The shift knob, because you can get it a little bit higher. So now you're right up the top. You have to pull this one back down to where it was, but... Alright, so um, that's probably you know a bit over the top for this song, but let's just bring it back. But I do like, even, you know, you don't even need the resonance here, you can just use it as a distortion box. So let's, let's do that a bit. Probably, yeah, four pole. Box it, in, box it in a bit and let's just really drive it. We're in the red, we're clipping, we're driving. So we've got a nice range of tone. We could automate this and kind of get this plucky, bassy guitar kind of sound. Or just a really subbier sound. We can bring this down a bit. So, probably spent way too long just then on the bass, but um, anyway, um, let's let's bring back everything and have a listen to where we are, and we'll just you know follow the chords and just do. Basic little bass line, just so we got something to play with and have a listen to it all together. Let's go. So um. Oh, 
So a bit loud. There we go. through a couple see what happens when we just change filter type on that some of the stuff we were just doing then so we had um on the drums so yeah let's um actually just bypass the drop on all these um let's get rid of that and uh yeah right we've got um um that bass sound will be a little odd because we're doing envelope stuff so let's just switch off the filters then and so let's have a listen to um, just the bass again. So pad. Oh yeah, yeah, that's what we should do. All right. Um, now, if you want to add some um, some motion to the um, to the pad. You can send some audio from um, from here. So let's create a new audio track. We'll monitor audio one and send it to um, strobe the drop. So now what we've got in here is um, in the sidechain input, 
we can now do some pumping of the pads. So let's do that um, from the drums. We'll press play. So that's just kind of the static sound over the top. And now let's apply, let's do a post and from envelope one. We want to bring it down in volume. So you can hear it doing its thing there. So let's look at envelope one just so you can see what kind of, we're on trigger, which is um, good, but let's put on gate. So we're doing an actual, an envelope follower instead of triggering. back it off a bit and then we need to make up a little bit of post. So there you go, so that's um, giving you that kind of ducking thing. Now we're already, um, already using the um, all the envelopes in this version of the drop on the base, so um, we'll grab a copy of the glue and put that on here instead, and um, enable the external side chain. Normally, you kind of just anywhere around about that kind of a setting usually does the trick. So we'll um, duplicate this one and send it to instead of strobe cipher and then the um, the glue. So we'll use that. On the base just to give give that a little bit of just a bit more gentle action from the drums so let's have a listen to that okay yeah we've got no filtering so um let's um re enable the Hey, that's better. So let's have a look at the needle. We'll just get that pumping a bit more. About 10. And then a bit of makeup. Actually, I'm not liking the um, track keyboard track. Let me just get rid of that. Let's switch back to the yeah, G uh, the Jupiter as well. All right. Stereo filtering, triggering from MIDI, um, bass boosting and cleaning up of drums, kind of EQ. Let's put that the final version of the drop on, which is doing that um, bass boost on the kick. Yeah, probably not that much. All right. So there you go, that's um, a few applications and a few demonstrations of um, what you can do with... Oh, I know what we should do, let's do... Um, let's um, show you the step sequencer doing stuff as well, because um, we didn't really do that yet. So um, let's set it to eight steps. And you can just kind of drag on here to drag the shape that you want. So I mean... Um, I'm going to drag a kind of a stabby pattern. We need to speed it up a bit. Let's um, eighths or sixteenths. And then 
why don't we do we'll do it on the um, pre to the filter so we've got that selected uh, I forgot to say as well when you've got like kind of multiple things um, modulated you click and hold and you can see everything that's modulating pre or if you click on the modulation um, source you can see highlighted everything that it's going to so it's just a quick way to kind of see what's going on at a glance of course you can already see that here because um, um, when you've got the destination selected the little rings light up to show you anyway but let's put the LFO and then it shows you that modulation is happening from this source when you dial in anything it puts it it gives it a glow so you can kind of see um, what's going on and this one was enabling it's kind of bypasses modulation so if you just want to listen without it for a sec you can but we want it because we're doing um, some stuff so let's um do that now what do we we need to trigger it we're not on beat yet so now we're in sync eighth note and we're doing some stabbing so we can do let's get rid of it so you can that's the original let's do some severe stabbing so you can I oh know we'll do it this asymmetry is good here you can bring in the gate time so Let's do it on 16th section. All right, that's better. So, so you can really gate it tight if you want, or have the full thing there. And um, you can get some stereo stuff going on with that one. Um, but let's um, modulate the cutoff frequency instead and do it with a um, sword down. There we go. So if you didn't want to um, use an envelope follower, you could just set up a pattern that you like. And we'll put it to uni, unipolar. So it's just a different feel on um, what you can get. And then you can just create some nice subtle variations. If you bring that negative, every second, um, sorry, the first, every odd um, level gets modulated. So it's perfect for kind of stabbing patterns like this. Or if you put it positive, then the down, uh, every even one gets modulated as well. So you get like a completely random shape if it's like that. All right, so that's um, LFO envelope follower. The last thing is FM. We didn't really cover that, um, but um, you can kind of dial in. Um, FM as well. It's kind of that's modulating off the actual audio, the drum loop itself, but you can sidechain that and kind of send in any modulation source you want. So, um, yeah, well, that's about it. Let's, um, bring back the rest of the song and, um, and that'll be that, that'll be it. And hopefully that's covered, um, a lot of ground for people to, um, get on and do interesting things with the drop. Oh yeah, distortion on drums, of course. So the drive works by increasing the input and then it attenuates the output by the same. So that way you can kind of adjust the drive without changing the overall volume too much and you can just make it up a little bit if you're really driving it. So um, if you're doing lots of drive like this, you might want to reach up here and start putting on some oversampling and just smooth the top end out a bit and um, make everything sound a bit nicer. There we go. 
So all right, let's just bring it back to normal kind of levels. And um, bring in the rest of the track like we were just about to do. Okay. Well, I'll leave it there. All right, see everybody.